You know, it's funny. There, there is a long and ancient connection between gay men and the church, hmm. which is sometimes ignored, but a, a, a great number of the writers, artists, uh, priests, monks who have devoted their lives to the church have also been gay. And there's, there's also been, it strikes me just from my own experience, a kind of affinity between gay people and Christianity that, that again, mm-hmm. defies the usual stereotype, but I think is partly in my own wrestling with this. It's partly because you do feel out of place. Hmm. You do feel slightly disconnected. So you have to think harder about who you are and what the world is. And hmm. the sense of displacement and the sense it connects with a God who himself as man was displaced, was rejected, was different, was other. Hmm. And that there's some kind of relationship between homosexuality and Christianity, which is not to say that heterosexuality and Christianity aren't thoroughly and more emphatically connected, but there is a particular calling, I think, that gay people have with religion. Maybe because we're historically and not used to having children, so we have our lives to give to something else. And, you know, priests were understood in my days basically marrying the church. But there was also, I think, I, I see it in someone like now, I don't want to get into a debate about whether Cardinal Newman was gay, but but someone like Newman, someone like Gerard Manley Hopkins, these people who definitely had a, had some deep sensitivity to the divine, seems to me to be in a, in a way I couldn't really express connected to their sexual difference. It's interesting, you know, because I am extremely... I, I don't agree with those who would say, you know, well, your your sense of the wrongness of this was was accurate, and therefore what you should have done is become celibate. You know, that's kind of a that would be the traditional response here, right? And I don't agree with that, but I I have a lot of time for that approach. I don't think that people who say that are are hateful or um, crazy or you know just trying to like work out some personal prejudice um and much of my life and my career has been involved with you know in in dialogue with with people who are more traditional on this question than than I am um but one thing i i do think is that whether you become celibate because you think that's what god wants of you or you proceed with fear and trembling as i have done into an attempt to sort of live out the best of what you can in in this in in being gay either way there's no version of your life where your distance from the ideal is not apparent to you all the time it's like you said it's that sense and that deep awareness that even if you become celibate you'll still be this thing that feels at least different if not if not wrong and what I really believe, and you know, my dad and I have talked about this a lot vis-a-vis his experience of being growing up Jewish in a kind of mostly Christian world, actually, I think that all of us are in that position in some way or another, but it can be easier for some people to ignore that about themselves because the world isn't constantly telling them about it or showing it to them. But this is the, to me, this is the whole meaning of the doctrine of original sin is that each one of us is kind of at this hobbled remove from some, that picture of what they, what they could be. And which is why I think when, when the homosexual is reminded of this more emphatically, very early in ways that he can't fix, then that truth becomes clearer to him or her. And that's, I think, what I'm saying. And also that there's a certain element of suffering yeah. involved, a certain that I think does bring one closer to God. I mean, I think for, as a, for a Catholic like me, I mean, it is, it's, it's, and this is, this is why it's different than Buddhism is that suffering brings you to God. It's not something to be mm. overcome in, entirely. It is a pathway for God to make himself apparent in your life. 